um, that's why the that's these are the tem the temperature fluctuations. This is how nice. the the temperature of the sky is once you have removed. Um, we can go into that if you want. Please. To. Um, so when the universe was really really young, it was very hot, very dense, and rather than being beautiful as it is now, it was more like a a, a soup of fundamental particles mm. all mixed in together. And so if you imagine you are a photon and you're trying to travel, you're not going to go very far because you're going to be bumping onto lots of people, lots of electrons, for instance. Yes. But as the universe cooled down, it relaxed a little bit, it, it became um, not as hot, and the electrons got trapped around nuclei, and so those created neutral structure. And when that happened, the photons could all of a sudden go freely. And so there is a time when you look back um, in time or when you look in the sky, when you look far enough, you look far enough in the past, in fact, there is a time where there's a surface where it, the photon got free. Just like imagine you look at a cloud mm -hmm. and, and it's all gray. But what is it when you look at the surface of a cloud? You can't see inside the cloud. Because inside the cloud, it's, it's humid, which means that light can't travel very fast. It's been scattered through yes. the water molecules in the cloud. And then as it reaches the surface of the cloud towards us, then it's free. It's free yes. to go. So we can see all the way up to the surface of the cloud. Now, we can do the same thing to the surface at the beginning of the universe, to the surface where before mm. that it wasn't a cloud per se, but it was this soup of fundamental particles. So we can look back in the sky to to many, many years ago, uh, to a time where the universe, I'm um, going to say something wrong, but I think it was about 300,000 years old. Uh, you can uh, Google the, the surface of uh, last scattering. And you can look at that surface and then you see how the universe looked like at the time. It's like looking at the surface of the cloud, but only what you're looking at is how the universe looked like when it was very, very young. What would you say? The surface the, the of surface, the surface of last scattering. Ooh, so that's last, the last, yeah, last scattering. scattering. That's the last time photons okay. got scattered. The surface of last scattering is the point in the early universe, approximately 380,000 years after the Big Bang. When photos became, when photons became free streaming after decoupling from matter, marking the transition from an opaque to a transparent universe. The surface is the origin of the cosmic microwave background, which is what we observe today as the faint microwave radiation permeating the universe. Okay. So looking at that, in fact, tells us a lot about how the universe was when it was very young and almost as young as at, at its moment of creation at the Big Bang. In fact, what we can see is that the surface, the temperature of the sky on that surface is exactly the same wherever we look, within one part in 100,000. So the temperature is exactly the Whoa. same uh, with an incredible precision. And you can look in this distance, you can look in this direction, and you can look in another direction, and it's exactly the same within one part in 100,000. And now if you remove these constant temperature from exactly uniform wherever we are in the sky, you look at, you see those tiny, tiny fluctuations. So when you, you see that picture, um, if, you, if you Google cosmic microwave background. Would it be under here? Or? Yeah, yeah. For, so that's the third picture. That yeah, one? That one, yeah. So this is a picture taken by... Of the universe. Um, that's why the, that's, these are the... Tem the temperature fluctuations, this is how nice. the, the temperature of the sky is once you have removed this very, very, very uniform temperature. So that constant temperature, you remove it and you see tiny, tiny fluctuations. Based on proximity to stars and things like that. No. no. This, these are based on, fa in fact, from quantum fluctuations at the very beginning of the universe. Mm -hmm. So at the very beginning of the universe, just after the Big Bang, there were fluctuations which are quantum in nature. They just pop in and out mm -hmm. and satisfy some statistics which are not the same kind of the statistics we know classically, the quantum statistics. Mm -hmm. But you just have a probability for something to happen just out of the blue. Quantum mechanically, you can't uh, prevent from that from happening. 
and they got an imprint they got imprinted in the sky and that satisfies exactly the right statistics uh, exactly the right distribution as what we would have expected if they were quantum in nature mm. and quantum in nature from the very beginning of the universe in fact before there was such precise observation in the sky so this is the third big uh, mission that looked at the temperature of the sky this is from Planck before that there was WMAP and before that there was COBE at the end of the last century I guess uh, COBE made the first measurement of the temperature of the sky and those fluctuations and before we had that there were all the possibilities out there like cosmic strings and other kind of models that could potentially have explained observation and since the first satellite um, measurements of the temperature of the sky, we now know that all of those alternatives are not correct. Mm. And in fact, it's, it seems to be pinning down to quantum fluctuations at the very beginning of the universe. How did we come up with the calculation in the first place, though, of 380,000 years from, say, like, I guess they were referring to Big Bang to that? Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. That's right. How, that's how right. did we come up with when the photon escaped? Oh, so so this is related to the temperature of the of the universe. We 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 actually have a very good handle on how the universe has uh, cooled down, how is that how it has evolved. In fact, the, the biggest handle we have on the evolution of the universe is the concentration of various kind of elements being present. The so the 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 most natural element the, and most abundant element in the universe. Among us, <laughs> uh, the dark components are the most abundant. But among us, it would be the it would be helium. Um, and then, if you took two helium atoms and you put them together, they're gonna generate. Uh, uh, sorry, the first scratch up. The most abundant one is the hydrogen atom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you were happy with both. Yeah, we, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we got to fire you now. It's misinformation. <laughs> It's a hydrogen atom. And then you take two hydrogen atoms, they can make helium. Mm. And you, that's that makes just your voice go up. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I was that's biting right. my tongue on that joke. I held that off for like a minute. Give me credit. That's right. And that's why you're like, oh, no. I have to give yeah. Yeah. So anyways, you have many different elements in the universe, but they only get produced once the right of them gets put together and that only happens if the universe evolves at a given rate mm. and so if we know how many how much of a particular kind of element there is in the universe that we have a good handle on how fast the universe has yes. been expanding okay. so we actually this is really really precise we can't play with that very much now wasn't there an argument and maybe i'm misremembering the numbers or what the what the status was here, but I, th I think this was back in 2023. I remember, I think Brian Keating was in here talking about it, but wasn't there an argument suddenly about whether or not the universe was around 13 billion years old versus 26 billion? Maybe, you, I don't yeah. know. No. All right, yeah, so maybe. Not yeah. With so typ all. typically nowadays we say it's 13.8 billion, something like that. That's exactly correct. <laughs> <laughs> I had that yeah. one ready. Right, oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't. I don't know. I should. I should ask him what he had in mind. Um, there's various type of um, arguments about all sorts of things. Um, now I'm trying to think what he was thinking about. Yeah. yeah can we yeah. Google that, Alessi? AG Universe 13 billion versus 26. Just keep it round numbers. On the temperature topic. Yeah. Is the temperature of what it is now assumed to be consistent? Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. How does that work? Because if you go back to this original side, everything was dense, everything was hot because it was compact together. So if the universe is continuing to accelerate, wouldn't you assume it's going to get colder? Yes, it's going to get colder and colder. Yeah, and it's oh. going to be very cold. So yeah. All right. So we, and you're going we, to get very lonely because things are going to get very, very diluted as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we have this up here, unless he got this. The age of the universe is generally estimated at 13.8 billion years. However, a recent study suggests that the universe may be significantly older, potentially around 26.7 billion years. The new research, while sparking scientific debate, proposes that the age of the universe may be nearly double the current estimate. So Rajendra Gupta of the University of Ottawa, in a study published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical, Astronomical Society, suggests a much older age of 26.7 billion years. This proposal is based on observations of early mature galaxies by the James Webb Space Telescope, which seems to contradict the standard age of the universe. Ah, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I know what you mean. That yeah. makes sense to you. So what does make sense is, indeed, there's been observations of formation of galaxies much earlier than we would have anticipated. And that's great. That's mm -hmm. great. Anything that uh, challenges us is great. Now, whether the explanation is that the universe is much older or anything else, I don't know. I really mm. don't know. But it wouldn't change it wouldn't change the math on solving for the say the 380,000 years post creation where the photon escapes because that's based on the temperature changing upon creation and not necessarily when creation happens. So whether it happened 13 billion years ago or 26 billion years ago it's the same concept temperature speaking at the beginning. So what that doesn't change now is in fact the time from us to that surface. Okay. And, we, and we can look at that surface, yeah. Got it. Now, what may have happened at the very beginning of the universe, we don't know exactly. And there could be much more time there or le far less time um, at that point. I, we don't know. Far less time? Well, no, no sorry. They, they could, what I mean is we, we, we set time zero as a big bang, uh -huh. and then we sort of set up the, the clock from there. But precisely what happened during the first uh, 10 to the minus... Uh, 20 second, whether that was 10 to the minus 20 second, or it was a tiny bit more, but a tiny bit less, or there was something before that, we don't know. Mm. Where do you think it all comes from? Like, do you, do you believe uh, in a creator? I believe in physics. So I believe that something, something must have happened. No, the, the, the curious question is, it's much more natural than nothing was there. Yeah. If you ask me, what is, what is, uh, the highest probability of the outcome. What is the outcome with the highest probability? I would say there's nothing. So it's amazing that we we have the chance to be somewhere and to ask ourselves those questions. Um, now, I don't need to have something with its own intelligence or its own being to explain the creation of the universe. I think science is much more creative than, mm. than that, um, even if we don't really know what the answers are. Right. And this is kind of like where science and religion fly in the face of each other, and yet mm. they seek to mm. answer the same question, yeah. like where yeah. it all comes yes. from, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is so yeah. fascinating to yeah. me that we've created yeah. like an enemy system there throughout humankind, where it's like, oh, one is different than the other. They're supposed to fight each other, but we're trying to get to the same level. Yeah. And this is something that you can you recover in all civilizations, you recover in Everybody, we ask ourselves the same questions and we're actually very curious to understand where are we coming from and how it works and uh, what does it mean and where am I going from there? Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.